turn to 1 Kings 14.10. 1 Kings chapter 14.10. And people are offended by me preaching this, but it is in the Bible. And I can't see how somebody can get mad at me preaching what the Bible says. Because it hurts their little sissified eardrum, what God says. But look at 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 10. And you've probably seen this passage in the Bible because it's, it actually occurs in the Bible six different times. This is only one of the six times that God says this. It says in verse 10, Therefore, behold, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam, and will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel, and will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam, as a man taketh away dung, till it be all gone. This is God pronouncing judgment upon Jeroboam. And he basically says, I'm going to destroy from Jeroboam him that pisseth against the wall. You say, that's a bad word. Well, the Bible says that every word of God is pure. Amen. Amen. I say what's being taught down at the public school is bad. Yeah. I say what the kind of smut that comes across the TV is unclean and Amen. dirty. I say these are God's pure words. And I'm going to preach what it says. Now, when I was in Germany, I saw a sign. And people have disputed that this sign exists. And yet, all you have to do... Do any kind of research you want. These signs are in Germany by the millions. I saw them in several different people's houses, including my wife's own mother's house. A sign prohibiting a man from pissing standing up. Seriously. I mean, the sign was on the wall, and I thought it was a joke. I thought it was just somebody being silly. And I said to my wife, is that a joke? I said, you know, that's kind of a crude joke. You know, why would they put that joke? They just love bathroom humor? You know, like, why would they put this sign up in the bathroom? I thought, that's got to be a joke. She said, that's not a joke. <coughs> she said, in fact, there is a derogatory word that you call another man in Germany that basically means that he pees standing up. That's what you call somebody to mean like they're an idiot, a barbarian. It'd be like our term redneck. Basically, they don't call you a redneck in Germany if you're, if you're that type. They say, oh, you're... Stay Pinkler. You know, basically, you're somebody who goes to the restroom as a man standing up. Oh, because, you know, if you were cultured, you'd sit down like a girl and go to the bathroom. Because that's what the sign tells you to do. Basically, what did he mean when he said that he'll destroy of Jeroboam in the pits against the wall? What did he mean? He means he'll destroy all the men, right? Because if you read the chapter, if you get the context of the whole chapter, he basically explains how there's one man of Jeroboam's household who will die in peace. And that was Jeroboam's son, who is actually a godly person. And God said, I see a good thing in that boy. And so he is going to go to the grave in peace. But he said, everyone else in that family, and he said, I'm just talking about the men. He said, everyone that pits against the wall will be destroyed by my judgment. Because of the fact that there's a difference between men and women. Men piss against the wall and women don't. And so he uses that to describe that. And yet, you know what the NIV does? It takes that out too. Even though, for you Hebrew scholars out there, if you go back to the Hebrew, you're not going to believe what it says in the original Hebrew. It says, in the pits against the wall, in the original Hebrew. And yet, for thousands of years, that was good enough for all the little Hebrew Bibles that were out there and all the Bible-believing Christians in Hebrew churches. That was all fine and dandy for them. And then for 400 years in America, it was fine. A Bible that said pissing as well. Nobody cared. But now, in the 1970s, what a godly time. What a righteous time in our country. What a time for manliness among men. The Bee Gees, you know, the most famous group. What a time for manliness in America. You come out with all these modern, sissified versions like the NIV, the New International Version, 1973, that changes it and just says, all males. Destroy the males. And you know, some of these guys are, I wouldn't call them men, I would just call them males. You know, these bunch of queer little sissies. They're not a man, they're, they might be male in gender, but are they showing themselves a man? And you say, well, God doesn't make that distinction. Then why did he say, show thyself a man? Why didn't he say, show yourself a male? No, he said, show thyself a man. He said, quit ye like men. He said, be a man. Because being a man is not just about being the male gender, folks. Being a man is about standing up for what you believe in, being strong, courageous, and not girly, not sissy, not effeminate. And so he didn't say he's just going to destroy the males. He said he's going to destroy him that pits against the wall because that's what a man does. And a man doesn't let a woman micromanage his life so much 
that she actually dictates to him how he uses the bathroom. Yeah. My mother in law tried to tell me how to go to the bathroom by putting up a sign in her house. Do you think I obeyed that sign? I did it. Amen. Amen. And it'll be a cold day in hell before a woman dictates to me how to use the restroom. And our society has become so effeminate and so sissified that people are offended by this preacher and they're not offended by women dictating how men use the bathroom. It's time that we as men take this country back. 